So far when implementing our regression models in Python, we've been using all of our data to do so. This however often leads to models which overfit our data and it becomes difficult to evaluate and make improvements to our model. So to ensure this doesn't happen, we split our data into two sections, training data and test data. So training data is the data we use to construct our model and most of our data should be used as training data. So usually this consists of around 80% of our data. However, if we have a lot of data, let's say around 100,000 rows of data, we can use more like 90%. And with a million or more rows, we can use around 99% of data. Test data can be thought of as the data which is hidden in the construction of our model. So we use test data on our model to see how well does our model perform on data it has not seen before. And then depending on the performance of our model on our test data, we can then make adjustments such as changing the hyperparameters. So before we looked at two hyperparameters, alpha known as the learning rate, and lambda, which is the regularization parameter. So we can make adjustments to these hyperparameters and then see how that has an effect on our model's performance on our test data. We can also adjust the amount of features or variables in our model if we found out that our model was performing poorly on our test data, this is a strong indication that our model is either overfitting or underfitting our data and adjusting the amount of features or variables can help resolve this issue. And if we are building a neural network, we can, we can try changing the number of layers and, see, and seeing how that has an effect on our model's performance on our test data. So the process of using test data to evaluate our model is called cross-validation. But how exactly do we split our data between training data and test data. Two common methods are train test split and k-fold cross-validation. So with the train test split method, we simply take a fixed amount of training data and a fixed amount of test data. We build our model on this training data and then check its performance on the test data. And the way in which we can test our model's performance is by looking at the cost function. There are many other evaluation metrics, such as the mean squared error or root mean squared error, but in this case, we're looking at the cost function to evaluate our model, which is given by the following formula. And the concept is very similar. Simply calculating the average distance our predicted humidity values are away from our actual humidity values. So some advantages of the train test split is that it works well with large data sets and has generally low competing power. So we can get feedback for our model very quickly. Some disadvantages include very poor and small data sets, so on, the previous, so on the previous slide, our data set only had 20 rows of data and that 20% that we are using as test data and we are not using as training data to build our model could turn out to be vital in capturing the relationship between our inputs and output. So using the train test split method often leads to high bias models, especially on small data sets. And lastly, there is a possibility of selecting test data with similar values which results in an inaccurate evaluation of model performance. So imagine if we selected humidity values, which all happen to be around 0 0.5, just by pure coincidence, and our temperature values all turned out to be similar, and same with our wind speed. That is, these aren't really the results you would expect, and we're using all of this data to test our model, and if this data doesn't reflect what general temperature values look like, this may not be a fair method on evaluating our model. So the second method of splitting our data is known as k-fold cross-validation. So this works by first splitting our data into k-folds. And a fold usually consists of around 10 to 20% of our data. So in this case, we've split our data into five folds. The algorithm then selects one of the folds. So in this case, it selected the fifth fold to be used as our test data and the remaining folds to be used as our training data. So here we're using the first four folds to construct our model and this will produce some parameters so let's say theta 0 theta 1 and theta 2 and then we're going to be evaluating this model using the fifth fold and we use the following formula to do so so we can attribute the cost of the fifth fold as a variable j5 so this process is then repeated now using the fourth fold as our test data and the first second third and fifth fold as our training data and again this will produce another set of parameters, theta 0, theta 1, and theta 2, which is slightly different to the previous parameters, considering we're building the model on different data now. 
and the cost would also be slightly different as we're using a different fold to test our data. So we'll now attribute this cost as J4. So again, the process is repeated, but now we're using the third fold as our test data and the first, second, fourth, and fifth fold as our training data. And this again will produce another set of unique parameters, which is slightly different, and another cost, J3. So we eventually cycle through all of our folds, producing five sets of parameters and five different costs. And lastly, we take the mean value of all of our costs, and let's call this capital J. And we do the same with all of the parameters calculated to give us a final mean value of theta zero, theta one, and theta two. And we then use this capital J, which was the mean value of all of our costs, to evaluate our model and make improvements. So notice here that all of our data has been involved in the construction of our parameters, theta zero, theta one, and theta two. So this may actually lead to a better model than the train test split, even if we were using the exact same model in both the train test split and the K4 cross validation, because here all of our data is being used up in the calculation of our parameters, as opposed to just 80% in the train test split. So this leads on to the relative advantages and disadvantages of K-fold cross-validation. So some advantages include, it works well on both small and large data sets. However, you might run into some issues when it comes to extremely large data sets, and you guys will see why in a minute. So all of our data is used in testing our model. So this gives an overall fair, well-rounded evaluation metric. Since we are not using the same fixed test data to evaluate our model, like we did with the train test split method. And using K-fold cross-validation may also lead to more accurate models, since all of the data is contributing to the calculation of our model's weights or our model's parameters. So some disadvantages are, has a very high computing power, which leads to slower feedback. So if we're using K-fold cross-validation on extremely large data sets, it may take some time to get our parameters calculated and our evaluation of our model. So in summary, when building a machine learning model, we split our data into two sections, training and test data. The training data can be thought of as the data we use to build our model and test data to evaluate our model. And we looked at two methods in which we can split our data. That was the train test split and the K-fold cross-validation. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. And if you guys have any questions or queries, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys again for watching.